The old time is just to say, do sumo to improve your conventional and do conventional to improve your sumo. Uh, last few days, that's kind of been playing on my mind. Um, I haven't been uploading what I've been doing kind of to warm up for these squats in the last few days. Um, but ever since I made that video, I found Poppy. Um, I've kind of been playing around with hip thrusts, um, kind of glued bridges, hip thrusts, um, just kind of in the house before I'd come out. Um, and then in the last few days, I've actually included them uh, like a barbell hip thrust. Um, uh, the reason for that is basically, when I made that video, I found Poppy, I legit thought I found Poppy. Uh, and I think the poppiness is coming from the glutes. Um, I know I've kind of ran around the bush for a long time. You guys know my style. I'm always kind of on the search, trying to kind of um, precipitate certain things to try uh, find the actual source of something. Um, I don't like blanket kind of feelings. I, I like direct causation. I want to know exactly what's happening. Um, so it's kind of led me to kind of believe that the glutes are kind of the missing link for me, um, even though, even though, like this is this is the craziest thing that I've learned last kind of week. Even though when I look at myself in the mirror, I've got some mean ass glutes. Um, ATG squatting has been documented quite well in literature uh, as a, probably the best you know stimulus for your glutes to grow. Um, and I certainly have uh, some glutes. <laughs> But in the same kind of uh, sentence, I can say that I also have interior pelvic tilt. And those two things can, can hardly coexist. Co How can you have really strong glutes and anterior pelvic tilt? Because anterior pelvic tilt usually means your glutes are relaxed or, as people have said kind of in the physio world, you have glute amnesia or dead butt syndrome. Meaning that the brain is kind of forgotten about your glutes They've kind of relaxed and the hip flexors at the front have taken over, hence why your pelvis is spilling forward. So I'm, I'm sitting back, I'm thinking to myself, why can these two things coexist? I've got strong ass glutes, yet my glutes are being overpowered by some hip flexors. So that kind of led me to kind of um, go on a bit of a, a journey, kind of experiment with all these different things. I've done clamshells, cl clamshells, I've done uh, glute uh, hip thrusts, uh, glute bridges, and things of that nature. And I've been kind of feeling better and better, and I've noticed my uh, pelvis kind of reposition and kind of balance out a little bit. And on top of all of that, I've found uh, like I'm more poppy. <laughs> I'm getting more poppy, right? So um, today, as you kind of can judge by the title, I, um, I forgot again to kind of include the footage of the, uh, the thrusts, but I did that before you guys are seeing this. So I went through my squatting routine today, feeling quite sore in the adductors. Um, in the last few days, I've kind of done a whole bunch of back offsets with doubles. Um, two days ago, I did 10 doubles. Yesterday, I did six doubles. And then today, I, I did one double. Um, kind of 10% shaving off the buff um, once I hit the top set. Top set today was 180. So I did that. I did the back offset. And then I went into sumos. Now, the reason why I've come into this idea is because um, my thinking is along the lines of when you have your legs externally rotated, I think it's easier to contract your glutes. Um, that kind of came about with me trying to position my feet when I'm doing the, the, the thrusts, um, the glute thrusts, the barbell thrusts. Um, every time I would kind of go for a narrow stance, I would have difficulty engaging my glutes. When I go kind of wider, my glutes, crazy contraction. Now with these uh, uh, barbell thrusts, I'm not going heavy, man. Like today I did 70 kilos and for most of the time before I was, I was doing 40 kilos. So uh, this is not a lot of weight. This is purely activation. Um, so I thought, okay, I know the glutes extend the hip, you know, and I know the glutes externally rotate the hip as well. And when I say glutes, I'm talking about glute max predominantly here. I know the medius and minimus have, you know, uh, AB duction, abduction, and have some effects on internal rotation as well. Um, but I just found like the big muscle, which is the glute max, has an easier time to kind of contract when you're externally rotating or when you kind of go wide. So I thought, well, what is the most explosive, most known exercise to engage the glutes is the deadlift, right? And I thought, well, let me just try sumos again. Now, I'm very undertrained. I'm very foreign to this movement. I've had a moment earlier this year where I kind of played with sumos only for like a few sessions. Never did I go for a, for a kind of one rep max, kind of heavy weight. It was always kind of lightweight. So today is a PR. Uh, I've got 200 kilos. Uh, I don't even know what that even means because how, how my body's not even used to this stuff. And as I was kind of pulling on the bar, as the weight got heavier, I was feeling very, very shaky through the groin. 
um, through the pelvis. Uh, some muscles that basically lay dormant usually have been kind of called into play as frontliners that were kind of in front of the, the pack there. So my, um, I don't even know what muscles you know we're talking about here, but I'm, I'm guessing the adductors um, got exposed, um, had quite a lot of difficulty. You'll see my 200 kilo max, like I had a, had a pull on the bar um, and then I kind of, ooh, I felt something might pop in my hip. And then I kind of, um, you know, got another brace and I kind of slowly put power into the bar instead of like jerking at it. Um, and as I was kind of pulling it, I had more and more confidence to kind of lock it out. But uh, essentially I hit a 200 kilo deadlift and this is the 180 squat. Um, it's interesting. Uh, it, it makes sense to me that, you know, if you're doing sumos and you have both hip extension and external rotation of the hip, you will have an easier time engaging that muscle group. Um, now, I, I'm going to spend some time doing this. Uh, and like, like the old time used to say, man, like, I mean, who am I, you know, to, to disagree with this statement? If you want to improve your uh, conventional, train your sumo. Now, and the other way around goes as well. If you want to improve your sumo trade, uh, trained conventional. Now, I think what's happening there is that you are targeting different kind of angles of the same kind of musculature. Um, I think with the sumo, as you guys know, and I only freshly kind of know, is that the hardest thing with the sumo is getting the bar off the floor. Um, this is something that I have trouble with anyway in the, in the conventional. Um, but with the, with the deadlift, with the sumo, it's kind of like a different sensation. Um, you need to have some flexibility there. You need to kind of externally rotate, kind of throw your knees out. And I ideally should kind of sit more into, into the, uh, kind of sit my, my butt in more. Uh, it's just, I don't have the, the rope, kind of the, the mobility for that. Um, so you'll see how I'm doing it. It's kind of more of a conventional uh, deadlift with just a wide stance. Um, but nevertheless, I felt different muscles come in. I felt the ductors come in. I felt my glutes come in a lot more. Um, so it's something to play around with, definitely. I, I think, you know, they both feed off each other because they're slightly kind of different takes on the muscles. Um, and with the sumo, definitely straight, like as the first session, um, I'm feeling my glutes contributing to the motion a lot more. And I'm feeling inductors, like I'm feeling adductors. And now, for some of you guys that might not know, adductors are one of those strange ass muscles, man. They have, they're a very, very big muscle group. Um, they're a much bigger muscle group than the hamstrings. So they should not be taken lightly. These are major contributors to human movement. Um, they both, this is, this is something that I don't quite understand, but they play a part in obviously adduction, you know, hence the name, adductors. And they also have plays with um, hip flexion and extension. So figure that, like some of these fibers, you know, contribute to like your knee going to your chest, like as in hip flexion. And then also some fibers contribute to hip extension. So if something is contributing to hip extension, it's worth your while to kind of give it some thought. Um, now, in the past, you know, when I've, you know, back, you know, long, long, many, many years ago, it seems, <laughs> it's only been a week, but before the lockdown, um, a few kind of months before that, I guess, not even months, weeks, I have kind of played with the adductor machine. I think it's called the Good Girl machine in the gym. And that kind of always made me feel all right. Like, it's just a weird sensation. That's because these adductors get warmed up. And then I kind of, when I go to the squat, I feel the squat is an easier thing because I've had them in the game. Um, like I said, they contribute to uh, hip extension. Now, from, from what I've read, from what I've read, when your hip is flexed at 90 degrees and below, the primary, listen to this, the primary hip extensor muscle is the adductors. It's not the hamstring or the, or the glutes. So when you are kind of in parallel and below, the main extensors of the hip in that position are your adductors because they are kind of mechanically most advantageous in that position. You know, they have, the, they have the leverage there. Whereas the glutes being so kind of stretched out and the hamstrings kind of in a weird position, they can't engage as well. So when you are kind of in the bottom of the squat and you're kind of bouncing out of the hole, the thing that's keeping you kind of upright and not collapsing forward is your adductors. Like your adductors contribute to that kind of propulsion out of the bottom. Um, and I have some adductors. It's just my adductors feel kind of gnarly and... They don't like to be in that extended position, kind of stretched out position that the sumo calls for. So I'm gonna have to kind of wait for that muscle kind of to work out what's going on. Um, so this is the 200 kilos. Uh, you'll see, I'll have a, have a go at it and I'm like, man, I don't feel so confident pulling this. Um, I don't even know which muscles I'm supposed to use. And my form is, is shocking. I'm not happy with the form. I felt a lot of back as well. 
So have a look at this. So I pulled it, hip rise, and I thought, nah, what am I doing, man? Let's let's trust the legs. Um, if you saw this from the side, you'll see that I was quite, quite bent over. Um, kind of like a freaking conventional, to be honest. It's just my legs were out wide. Um, I think the reason for that is I don't have the mobility in my ductus to open up the hips and kind of sit more forward, uh, sit more back and down. Um, but anyway, as a, as, a, as a baseline, I've got a 200 kilo sumo. Feels good. And I'm, I'm looking to kind of improve that now because I believe now the glutes are kind of in the game as well. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Um, tomorrow's going to be an early session. So expect a video tomorrow early from me. Uh, I've got work tomorrow. All right, guys, until then, have a good one. Peace out.